What's going on everyone? So about a month ago, we went and took a deep dive into Ryzen's RAM performance and which gems would work best in the early days of the architecture. I think it's safe to call this video a follow-up because AMD released a new microcode that is quickly finding its way into the new beta BIOSes for your X370 motherboards. And we actually got our hands on one of those and wow, things have changed. All right guys, I've been preparing for this Ajiza update for a bit now with all the rumors that this is gonna be a beast of an update which could or would enable Ryzen to really shine alongside some lightning fast RAM. And so far, it's not that far off from being exactly that actually. The Ajiza 1.006 update has made its way to ASUS and Gigabyte and has added 26 new memory parameters with the most dramatic being the increased memory strap options, meaning that we can exclude BCLK for RAM overclocking on those high-end 3300 kit or above. AMD went and expanded these straps all the way up to 4,000 megahertz, but that doesn't mean that we can get there, at least not yet. However, the majority of users are saying that the most important addition to the microcode is the ability to tweak about 24 different memory timings. Previous microcodes only enabled us to tweak the standard five timing set adjustments, but with this new iteration, a user now has complete control over primary and secondary timings. There's also been quite a few new inclusions like the Pros ODT or the CPU on die termination, which you can adjust the resistance value in ohms. The setting basically determines how a completed memory signal is terminated, which greatly helps with stability and overall just getting your Ring posted. Another key stability finder here is a CLDO VDDP setting, which is the voltage for the DDR4 PHY on the sock. And believe it or not, having a lower figure here can actually help with stability and the removal of memory holes. The safe bet is a value of 945 to 975. So guys, with all those changes out of the way, let's jump right into getting your system posted at rated speeds. For this, and every system is different, I'll go through the settings that I've used to get me stable at 3600 megahertz, and then we'll jump right into the benchmarks. And for this benchmark, guys, we're using a few different kits from G-Skill. Links are all in the description. So obviously you're gonna need the new BIOS. I'll link to the Crosshair 6 Hero Beta BIOS down below if you have that board, and I'll leave a link to the OCN forum where you can find the link for the Gigabyte BIOS. So boot into Windows and download Typhoon Burner link below. This application will give you all the sub timings standard for your kit. Make sure you write these down because they are very important. So reboot into BIOS, set your RAM to the rated speed in the strap and apply the rated settings and timings that you wrote down, including the sub timings. That's very important. Make sure you include those sub timings. Now, this might take a little bit of work as each IMC is different, but at the bottom of these timings, you can adjust the command rate. Start with 2T and gear down disabled. And for Pros OCDT, keep this at 53.3, but experiment with different ohms if you can't post or keep stable. For me, I saw great results with 68.6 ohms. And don't forget to set your CLDO VDDP starting with around 945 to 975, finding that sweet spot for stability. Now this may take a little bit of work to find your stable point, but if you had a hard time working with the XMP, this should definitely help find that stability and remove any memory holes. So if you have any questions or want to share your OC results, leave a comment down below. But I'll also share a link to the community over at OCN where there's a lot of really great people and lots of help if you need something in real time. So for me, I was able to get 16 gigs stable at 3600 megahertz and doubling up the kit to 32 gigs, so four by eight, I was able to get them stable at 3466. That's pretty impressive because, I mean, I was lucky to come anywhere close to 3200 megahertz previously. So with all that being said, do these actually result in increased performance? So looking at Cinebench, we're seeing performance increases as memory scales across all the kits. Even the two by 16 gig Ripjaw kit was able to post and make stable at 2933 and posted a pretty decent result, but the most impressive in leading the pack obviously was the 3600 megahertz, which I was able to tighten even further from rated at CL15, and it posted a score of 1715. Jumping into Premiere Pro CC, and this test actually resulted in more questions for me than answers. Yes, we saw some decent performance boost with the new microcode, as much as 16% when we compare at 2666 compared to 3466. And if we look clock for clock, there was actually a 6% increase in performance due to the tighter sub timings. Impressive. But looking at the performance scaling from 16 to 32, there wasn't as big of a gap here as I expected. So that's really strange as performance is known to scale in relation to capacity, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. 
Looking at Grand Theft Auto 5, and I tested this at 3440 by 1440p to get a real world apples to apples comparison. And sure, we could get a better idea of performance at 1080p with everything on low creating that GPU bottleneck. But no one really plays with those settings. And if you wanted to get a real world feel for any performance increases, we need to set it to the day to day settings. And guys, the biggest impact that we saw was with the new BIOS going from 2666 to 3466 in minimum frame rates. As it looks like the faster the RAM, the better the minimums. Averages and highs didn't change that much at all, but surprising to see that the RAM impacted the minimum frame rates by as much as 11%. So with all of that being said, and looking at the results is one really glaring question that stood out more than any other. At high speeds like 3466, does capacity really matter anymore for this platform? I mean, looking at the price, you would expect to see some incremental performance coming from the investment. And while there is some, on average, you're seeing anywhere between 6% improvement in gaming to 4% improvements in Premiere. Looking at the 32 gig Ripjaw kit in comparison to, let's say, the 16 gig CL16 3600, performance is roughly the exact same. And that all comes down to the reality of dual channel bandwidth. We really do hit a performance wall at anything above 16 gigs with the standard dual channel setup. And this BIOS has really improved RAM performance and compatibility, and quite frankly, the benefits of using 32 gigs over 16 right now is really minimal. So until the new X390 chipset is out and we can make use of quad channel DDR4 and make use of that extra bandwidth, the best bet is to roll with a single 16 gigs or two by eight kit and try to get it as fast as possible. Because as seen with this new beta BIOS at 16 gigs, performance does scale extremely well with faster RAM. So guys, let me know what type of OC you're able to reach down in the comment section below. I'd love to see how you guys net it out performance wise. I'm pumped to see if anybody actually hit that magical 4,000 megahertz benchmark. I'm not too sure if anybody's gonna get there quite yet. Leave a like if you like this type of content and make sure you're subbed and be a part of the notification squad because we're gonna give you a major sneak peek into some of the major announcements at Computex with the new video going live tomorrow. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, we appreciate you and we love sharing this wonderful world with tech with you guys. And we'll see you in another video that's actually going live tomorrow.